Hey, what's up guys? So welcome back to Bama Jaybird Resale. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Josh. As always, it's great to have you with me. We are going to go over a few items that have sold. I've had 15 sales for $569.48, but we're also going to talk a little bit today about some things that you can do, especially if you are a new reseller, in order to save money, cut costs, just to find a way to not spend unnecessary money. You know, when you're first starting out, it's important that you take every step possible not to uh, put money into things that you don't have to and to find ways, you know, to maximize those early profits. Because a lot of times people, you know, when you're doing this, I know a lot of you are working and it's already things are tight and you're just looking for a way to make that little bit of extra income. And so you want to make sure that you're not overspending because you want to maximize profits really all the time, but especially when you're kind of getting on your feet and getting started. So the first thing I would suggest is that you look for recycled boxes. You can find recycled boxes for your shipping at almost any of your local retailers. They will either throw them in the dumpsters out back, sometimes they'll be on carts inside the store, and if you will ask politely, generally, you can load up a buggy and take them to your vehicle. Um, like at Dollar General, they a lot of times have these stainless carts that are sitting outside the store and inside the store when they are shoving goods that are loaded with boxes. Um, but you can go to any retailer, clothing, uh, uh, you know, food, whatever, and you will find boxes. You can find plenty to do your packing and shipping. Another thing that relates to shipping, I guess the second way you can save money, we all have to have packing paper and bubble wrap and air pillows and various things like that to secure the items in the box. And if you will visit, again, local businesses, make contact, I find the office buildings, schools, uh, I get a ton from my wife's work, which is a health department. It's, it's a huge building and they got all kinds of offices. They're always ordering in supplies that come in big boxes with small items that have tons of air pillows and bubble wrap packed around them. And so if you'll take time to call some of these places or think about who do I know that work in certain buildings and certain professions and say, hey, is there any way you could put out a you know request to save some of this material for me? You would be surprised at how much free packing materials that you can acquire. And that cuts down on your cost and it cuts down on it quite a bit because those things can add up when you start selling a lot. All right, so let's go over a few sales now. I, of course, I've got a lot of music that's going out. I'm still listing music, but uh, this is from my CD buy. I just keep selling out of it. This is Ann Herring, it's a two disc lot. And I sold this for $11.99. This is contemporary gospel music. That was the last big set out of that buy that I listed and it's selling. I was kind of uncertain whether it would sell or not or how fast it would sell, but I've been pleasantly surprised. I'm making a decent amount of money off of it. All right, sale number two is also from that particular buy. And it again is a set of CDs. This is Delirious, again, contemporary gospel. There are five albums here. And they're titled Hashtag Touch, Live and in the Can, uh, King of Fools, Mesomorphosis, and the Definitive Worship Experience. So anyway, five albums from Delirious, and these sold for $17.77 plus shipping. All right, this next sale is really cool. You can't really see it here. I will put a thumbnail up of this so you can see it. But this is a starter, vintage starter Alabama pullover. And I sold this for uh, $49.99 plus shipping. So this was an awesome, awesome sale. And uh, I should make a really good profit on that. I think I gave like five bucks for it. And uh, you know, watch out for vintage starter stuff. It's a great bolo. Vintage starter, whether it is college or professional teams, typically does really, really well if it's in good condition. Be careful about picks and stains and tears. Look inside the pockets. Pay close attention to condition because condition can greatly affect the price. And oftentimes those older garments can have that type of stuff, yellowing, sun fading, all those things you need to watch out for to make sure that you make a good investment. And uh, let's go ahead and use that to bridge into my third piece of advice for saving money. Be careful about what you, you buy to resell. Uh, don't confuse selling an item for more than you paid for it as always making a true profit. I thought about this and, and I thought, you know, well, if you buy three items, thrift store prices are notoriously, notoriously high. Thrift store prices are notoriously high. And uh, when you're first starting out, if you're like me, I made a lot of purchases I shouldn't have made. And um, so I thought, you know, uh, eight to ten dollars is not uncommon to see on certain items in a thrift store and i thought to myself you know if i bought three items for ten dollars each and i was able to you know list all three of those items after making a trip and i sold two of them for twenty dollars a piece well it sounds pretty good right 
who wouldn't trade a ten dollar bill for a twenty dollar bill but you know sometimes starting out we don't i don't think we realize this it's not that simple and uh, between the taxes and fees and all the different things you have to pay out of that sometimes that amount evaporates very quickly and what appears to be a profit turns into a loss so i said this because this oftentimes what you'll find is you may sell 75 80 90 percent of what you buy you're always going to buy some things that maybe just don't end up selling or they take forever to sell. And so in that particular circumstance, you buy three, you pay $10 each, you're out of your pocket $30. The two items that you sell, you sell for 20, so that's 40 bucks. And let's say out of that 40 bucks, by the time you add the taxes and the shipping, cause I'm assuming that you're doing calculated shipping starting out, which is a smart way to start. It's easier to not make mistakes that way. Let's say the buyer is all in at about $58. Well, now you have to pay fees right to eBay on the $58. And when you take that out, it's about 13.25%. It's just over 12 bucks. Well, you subtract that from the original 40, as well as the $20 that you spent. And uh, you're down to what? Uh, uh, $2, I mean, sorry, you're down to $12.32. And then you have to also compensate for that item that hasn't sold. So if that item never sells, you're still out $10. Well, you're $2.32 a profit. Now think about this. You've driven to the store, you spent the gas. If you had to pay for any of your materials, tape or anything that you use to package it, you're out that. But your time, your time cleaning, if you had to wash the items, if it was a clothing item, you know, whatever you had to do, you have to consider that. And your time is valuable. So even if you come out and you don't lose money and you just say, well, I broke even, did you really? Because all that time you spent prepping and doing the listing, you're getting paid nothing for your time. Time's valuable, folks. And you know, if you're investing time into something and not making anything, that's not a good, not a good avenue to go down. So be careful about that. You know, there's a reason why a lot of us resellers will say, you know, when I'm finding an item, number one, I've got to make sure that it's going to sell. You know, we've got to avoid these bad purchases. So I need to learn how to price comp very well, but not like just randomly look an item up and then look at what all is listed. I've got to learn to price comp using the what sold items and to take that information and then try to determine right between the listings and the number of items sold and the, the typical price it's selling at. Because look, you can't go by the highest sold value. I mean, if at best you need to land somewhere in the middle and I would say probably the bottom third if you really want items to move. So you gotta look at what that bottom third price is compared to the buy price and determine, is there enough room there to actually realize a profit and make it worth the time I'm going to invest. So learning to comp well is so, so important starting out because that's one of the quickest ways that people begin to lose money or at least become discouraged with the whole process and give up on it. But I assure you there are plenty of good items out there to source that will make you a profit. But you need to make sure again, you know about what it's gonna sell for and I wouldn't shoot for doubling the price because you know maybe if it's 500 into a thousand that's a little different right but when you're buying these smaller items it's very easy to work yourself to death for almost no profit so be very careful about that when I'm buying things for you know ten dollars or less I'm looking to be able to sell it most of the time for at least you know four times what I'm spending on it if I'm not able to do that then I'm probably not going to realize enough profit to make it worth my time so be careful about that all right Hopefully that wasn't confusing. I, I tried to map that out well in my mind and, and ahead of time to explain it. But let's get back into some what sold. So the next item, next item I got going out, this is a set of five Polo Raph Lauren or Lauren Raph Lauren, I guess, more like it's what's on the hanger. These are vintage wood hangers, like the store style hangers. Pay attention to stuff like this. Sometimes things will surprise you. These actually sell fairly decent. And uh, the set of five of these sold for $16.77 plus shipping. And uh, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good little price, you know, to get, I think, for five hangers. And the reality is I paid $7 for like maybe 100 hangers. And I've got all different kinds, different sets. They're Polo Ralph Lauren, Eileen Fisher. And, uh, you know, I mean, if I'm able to sell every five to seven hangers for, you know, 15 to $20, that's going to be a lot of profit off of a $7 investment. So watch out for the strange that, you know, things you wouldn't expect oftentimes have value. And especially if it's got the right name on it. Hey guys, so what's up? Just want to jump in real quick and say, if you haven't already subscribed, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Hit that button, hit the notification bell. Give me a thumbs up. That's awesome. Anytime you can do that helps out not only me, but any other creator that you watch regularly. And while you're at it, I've got a question for you. 
What's your best piece of advice that you can give new resellers on how to limit their cost and save money when they're starting out? And for those of you that may be new to reselling, what's the biggest mistake you've made when it comes to spending? What, what, what do you regret most having spent money on or where you've lost money? We've all been there, so let me know in the comments. So this next item is probably my very best sale today. I had on my last video that I released a huge eight track sale and it was Ozzy Osbourne. This one is Billy Idol. Let me get it where you can see it, Billy Idol. This is Rebel Yell. And this one, again, in absolutely terrific condition. No staining, no fading, it's just great. And um, this one sold for $90 plus shipping. So that's a $200 sale and a $90 sale on eight tracks just within the week. So awesome, awesome thing to watch out for. Most eight tracks aren't worth anything. You find the right ones that are rare, in excellent condition, you might be shocked at what they can sell for. All right, the next item I have going out is also music. You know, it's a common theme these days, right? I've been listing a ton of music, and uh, you know, I, I'm a music lover. For those of you that don't know, uh, I have sang in groups from the time I was little. I don't anymore, but I sang in several quartets from the time I was like, you know, 10 years old up until I was in my early 20s. And I traveled some with some groups when I was older and in college. I uh, even got to sing on cruise ship. I mean, that'd be a big thing to some people, but I thought it was cool. You know, it's the only time I even got to take a cruise. But uh, but I really enjoyed that. I write songs. I, I, I lead worship at church, play guitar, play piano. Uh, so I love music. That's the moral of the story, right? I love music. And so I found that the longer I've resold, the more I've been kind of drawn toward looking at music. And a lot of my bigger purchases that I've made uh, in terms of bulk inventory have fallen in this area, especially in the last year or so since I've started trying to do this more full time. So this is a big lot of Phillips, Craig and Dean. This is seven CDs out of my bulk buy that I made. And uh, I won't read all the titles on these, but again, Phillips, Craig and Dean, you can see some of these. I don't know if you're familiar with them or not, but check them out sometime. They're pretty good. And uh, sold those for $20 plus shipping. So let me say this. I know that at $20, that don't sound like very much. You're talking about seven CDs, right? Seven CDs, a $20 sale. That's, you know, less than $3 per disc. But here's the reality, right? I've got like 30 cents in each of these. So that's at the top, right? 25 to 30 cents, but let's call it 30. So at 30 cents, that's $2 and 10 cents into a $20 sale. So it's about $2 into 20. That's 10 times what I paid, 10 times what I paid. So it's still a good profit making sale for me, even though the money's not big. And I can buy these at some of my local thrift stores, CDs like this for a quarter a piece all the time. They're a quarter, that's what they are. And uh, so anytime you can assemble a good lot of the right groups, you still gotta check it out, run those comps you might find that you can make pretty good money. All right, the next item going out is a really, really awesome find. I, I actually have had these for a while. I bought several sets of these paperbacks, Magic the Gathering. This one is a Masquerade, I think. Yeah, uh, Mercadian Masquerade. And this is books one, two, and three, first edition paperbacks in excellent, excellent condition, guys. These are awesome. So I bought these, you see how, I mean, they've, very little use the one might have been read and that's it these came in a local thrift store they were priced up a little bit i think i spent like 50 dollars altogether for maybe like 25 books um, this set by itself is the last one i had i've sold all the rest of them i'm way into the profit but this set right here by itself sold for 55 dollars plus shipping uh, magic the gathering stuff is always something good to watch for whether it's the cards or the memorabilia or even the books in this case you can find some really good bolos in that particular genre Next item going out, this is a movie. I think the time of year influenced this. I don't care for horror movies myself. I know some people are huge fans. This is The Prophecy and Hellraiser, 11 films on one disc. Um, so that's pretty cool. Sorry, 11 films on two disc. <laughs> one I thought to myself, one seems like a little excessive, right? That's a lot of, a lot of data to store on one disc. So uh, it's actually two discs, but 11 films on two disc. And that's a pretty cool set for those that like that genre. I sold that for just $4.79 plus shipping, but I had like a quarter in this. I picked it up at that same place I can get music for a quarter. So, you know, a quarter into $5, just under $5. That's not too bad. It was a quick list. I listed it like three days ago. It's already sold. And I'm getting it out the door, make a couple bucks, move on. All right, the next item I have going out is a tool. And most of you know that tools can be very profitable. Uh, brands you need to watch out for, of course, near the top of the list is probably 
Snap-on uh, when it comes to like mechanic style tools. Uh, the Snap-on Mac uh, Proto is a good one. This is what this is. This is a Proto Universal uh, joint, half inch dry swivel joint. And so this is just an adapter to help you get into tight places. This sold for $7 plus shipping. I'm not sure what I had in it. I bought two or three big boxes full of tools, sorted through them, listed the stuff that was listable. I'll yard sale or, or donate or maybe hold on to the stuff that's not good name brands. But again, uh, Snap-on, Mac, Proto, uh, I know I'm forgetting a lot of them, guys. My goodness, my brain. Some of the old Craftsman, a lot of the vintage stuff. There's a lot of great vintage brands like Williams and Armstrong, different things like that. But uh, just pay attention to tools. It's always worth a look up. And then there's brands of other specialty tools. Specialty tools that can be really, really valuable. So pay attention to those. All right, so the next item up, also a little different. This is all clad, all clad. This is a small wok. I think it's 10 inches. Super nice condition. Picked this up recently. Uh, on one of my trips to go get some stuff that didn't pan out on Facebook and instead I came back with things that were not expected some hats came back with some cookware uh, and this all clad is awesome stuff man I mean if I wasn't trying to resell and make money I would hold on to more of this stuff because I also like to cook you know that's one of the things I do but uh, anyway this sold for $40 plus shipping and I think I gave $5.99 for it so six bucks into 40 a uh, pretty quick flip actually I listed that and it sold in like two days all right, so let's jump back into our topic and about two or three more little things I want to bring up that might help you save some money if you're starting out reselling. Don't buy a bunch of things that you don't have to have right out of the gate, guys. Look, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I love my label printer. I love it. But for a long time, I didn't have a label printer. I could not justify spending money on a label printer. Some will say, oh, well, there's cheaper options now that you can get. And that may be true, but it's not always about, you know, just finding a cheaper option. It's not about that to me even. I mean, if I'm spending 50 or 60 or $70 on something that I can't justify when I've not yet made $20, why would I do it? So just be careful about, you know, overspending out of the gate on technology and different things to make your life easier. Um, it's okay. It's okay to work without it to begin with. You don't need fancy lights. You don't need printers. You don't need all this stuff that, that everybody makes it. You when you're watching us on YouTube that you think, well, I've got to have this stuff, right? Um, let it all come as you can make the money to justify the expense. I think that's the smartest way to approach it. You know, for instance, for your labels, you can always print the QR code, especially when you're just starting out and you're having lower volume sales. Print that QR code that you can take to the post office and they'll print the labels for you guys. If you have a regular printer, I know ink is expensive, but if you're just selling a few items a week, just print those things on the printer and tape them on, man. Code them out, tape them on. I did that with a lot of my packages to start with. It's inconvenient, it takes a little extra time, and it's not as efficient. But when you're starting out, and time's not an issue, and you don't have a ton of things to list, it's not such a big thing. It's worth, the, it's worth saving the money. All right, so the last piece of advice I have for you to help you save money when you're starting out is to look for inventory you don't have to pay for. You might wanna start in your own house. There's probably things sitting around that you don't use anymore. There may be, you know, whether it's cookware, whether it's electronics, uh, whether it's some vintage stuff and old, you know, old t-shirts maybe, you know, some of that vintage stuff that you've held onto that was important to you years ago may no longer be important to you. Pop the door open on the, on the closet in the hall that you haven't looked in and dug through in forever. See what's in there. Maybe venture up into the attic or down into the basement and see what you've held on to that you no longer feel attached to anymore. Also, a big, big, big piece of advice here, guys. Always reach out to friends, family. Uh, if you go to church, maybe your church family, uh, your coworkers. Always put a little word in with those people and just ask around. Be like, hey. You know, if you got anything you're looking to get rid of, you know, things that you're going to donate, if you'll hit me up, but maybe some stuff that I'd be interested in, I'm trying to make a little extra cash reselling online. Just be honest. Everybody has trouble just telling people what they're looking to do or what they are doing for some reason, but you'd be surprised at how much you can acquire simply by letting people know what you do and saying, hey, I'd love for you to come to me first and give me a chance. And if you don't, you know, if you'll let me have the first look, I'll haul off the stuff I don't, I'll haul it off for you. I'll take it to the donation center for you. You send it to Goodwill, fine. I'll take it to Goodwill. Would you let me look through it first? You know, just saying, you might be surprised at what you would come across. And look, there's no better price than free. That's, that's the best price you'll ever get on anything for inventory. So the lower your cost of goods, right? 
the easier it is to make a profit. Those $10 sales we talked about earlier, or those, I mean, those $20 sales, if you've got that item that you're going to pay $10 in the thrift store for, but you can get it for nothing from a family member, a friend, or from your own house and sell it for 20, you're definitely going to make profit in that situation. So again, best inventory you can find is the kind that is free. All right, let's finish up sales. The next item I have going out is the complete series at French Village. Picked this up at a local flea mall. I think they had like $5 on it and I sold this for $30 plus shipping. So pay attention to complete series, whether it's on DVD or even better if it's on Blu-ray. And the more obscure, oftentimes, the better it is. If you don't recognize it, it's not always a bad thing. In fact, a lot of times when we don't, I've never heard of that. When you don't recognize the name, a lot of times those are the ones to look up. Uh, when you resell for a while, you've been doing it for a while, and if you do media very much, you'll find that you've looked up a lot. You, you've eliminated a lot of things. I don't have to look certain things up anymore. But when I run across something I've never seen, I think, hmm, that must not come up very often. So I'm gonna check it out. All right, so the next item is also music. So back to my big lot. This is a new and sealed Asia CD featuring John Payne. Uh, this is a pretty cool, it's extended versions of their songs and this sold for $29.99 plus shipping. Next item is a set of FFH, another contemporary band, FFH. This is again out of that set. So again, 30 cents or so per CD. There's six of these. So a dollar and 80 cents into $17.99. So again, that's about 10 times my money, 180 into 18. 10 times your money is good, okay? Even when it's only selling for $18, that's still good. Uh, don't, don't underestimate that. So again, I've probably flipped through too many of these. I'm not trying to make the video too long, but anyway, FFH, six CD set, $18, good sell. Next item, this is another music lot. This is Renaissance, pretty cool set. These sold for $13.99 plus shipping. So again, 60 cents into $13.99. That's you know probably 20 times my money. That's that's ridiculous. All right, so the last item today in the video is a liquid blue Alice in Wonderland with the Mad Hatter on the front. Guys, this is awesome. Blue tie-dye, super, super awesome shirt. A lot of you may be familiar with liquid blue because of the Grateful Dead tees, but they do make a lot of other tees as well. So anytime you see the liquid blue tag or you know even just the label, if it's not the tag, but the screen print style in the back, make sure you take a look at it, look it up. There's a good chance it could be worth money. This item sold for $26.99 plus shipping, and it was uh, uh, a used t-shirt. You know, this isn't new. So $26.99 uh, plus shipping on that. All right, guys, well, that's all I got for you today. And, uh, you know, I know this isn't as, as deep of a video as I do sometimes. I haven't had time to do a lot of, uh, you know, really heavy prep for videos. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot more work than I even realized, you know, early on. But I do like to make higher quality stuff than this. But I want to also make sure that I get content out. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I appreciate all of you that watch. Uh, so many of you that are so faithful to the channel. I love you guys. Just thank you so much. And, uh, you know, my life's a little busier now than it was a few months ago. Mom's been living with us full time now for several months. And I just don't have time or the opportunity to do as much YouTube right now. I hope that changes as time goes on. Um, I'm going to continue to do as much as I can. But, um, yeah, anyway, I don't want to beat that dead horse, you know, as they say. But I uh, just want to kind of give you a heads up. You know, that's where things stand right now. And, you know, we're trying to keep our head up, stay positive. Uh, I know that God's got this. He's got us all, and he's, got, he's in control. And I'm just going to trust him. But, guys, you keep pressing on. Keep working hard. And like I said already, I love you. God loves you. And whatever you do, guys, don't you ever, ever give up. And I will see you on the next one.